Someone asks, is it okay for you to lie if there's a good reason to lie? I'm Father Andrew Dickinson from Pius XII Catholic Newman Center, and let's find out. So on a comment on one of our other videos, uh, someone asks, is it okay to lie if your lie is for a good reason? This is a common question in moral studies, in studies of moral theology, in studies of right and wrong, studies of ethics. It's a common question even in uh, Catholic Christian circles. People ask this question. Maybe we'll use the example of, uh, say, like the Holocaust, right? And you're hiding uh, Anne Frank's family, if you've never read the diary of Anne Frank. right? Maybe you're hiding uh, some people from uh, the Nazis, and uh, they come and they pound on your door. Do you have anyone in here? You know, what do you tell them? You know, is it uh, morally permissible to lie in that situation? That's a tough question. The first thing to remember, though, is that it's not good to make moral precepts based on difficult situations. So that'd be a horrible situation to be in, right? To choose between do I honor the truth or do I protect these lies, right? That's a a horrible situation to be in. And so we don't want to create universal things, right? That uh, if I lie to this professor, I'll preserve my grade. But if I don't lie to this professor, I'm going to get caught. And therefore, my dream of being a doctor is going to go down the drain. Uh, Those are just not equal situations. And so we just don't want to create a moral precept based on a challenging situation like uh, you're hiding people from a Nazi death squad. The second thing to learn is that As Christians, yeah, we actually take the truth that seriously. We take the truth so seriously that it's not good to lie for any reason whatsoever. Now, Christians are pretty unique in this regard. Uh, Other religions in the world uh, will say that there are reasons in which it's okay to lie. But we as Christians say no. In fact, as Christians, we say it's never right to do an evil so that a good might come about. It's never right to do an evil so that a good might come about. How do we look at that in practical situations? It's never good to do an evil so that a good may come about. Some people might raise the example of uh, war or self-defense. Aren't you doing an evil so that a good may come about? Well, no, that's not the case. Because in those instances, uh, say you're defending your home and your family against an armed intruder, uh, there you're choosing to defend yourself, right? That's your active cho- choice. Your choice isn't to kill. Uh, your choice is to defend, and you're prepared to go to the extent that that defense might take. And so it's, again, not a pleasant situation, not a pleasant topic, but uh, there's a clear difference in choice. I'm choosing to defend. I'm not choosing to kill. So going back to lying. So, no, it's not good to lie so that a good may come about. But how do we look at that? How do we think about that? Why is it the case that we can't do an evil so that a good may come about, whether the evil is lying or some other thing? Well, this has to do with the Catholic vision of the moral life, that uh, the moral life is a world in which justice is owed. You owe justice to God, and you owe justice to your neighbor. Any evil you do affects the spiritual reality of the world we live in. And so even though it's an evil what you do for hopefully a good result, it's still uh, an evil, and that does mar the justice of this world. So as Christians, we don't do evil so that good may come about. If you ever get in a situation where you're forced to that horrible decision, the one solace I would tell you is that even if you choose to speak the truth, right? If you choose to speak the truth, the I'm not going to do an evil so that a uh, good may come about, you're not responsible for the death of those who would be killed, right? And that's sort of uh, rare but real situation, right? That if you don't lie, someone may die. Uh, but if you choose not to lie, you choose to speak the truth, it's still the people themselves who uh, pursue the violence against those you're protecting. They're the ones who are morally responsible for the truth. They're the ones who harm the justice of the human and divine communions uh, by their violent actions. It's not you. Now, that might, be, might seem like a, a weak consolation, but it's a good consolation all the same. Uh, in that regard, that you've still chosen to serve justice, to serve righteousness, to serve truth. And if if the human communion and the divine communion is harmed, it's not by your actions. 
Now a little postscript would be that uh, you could choose to maybe try to evade answering the questions. Now your interviewers might realize that you could try to speak around it, right? Uh, are you hiding any juice here? No, I've got no juice here. You know, no orange juice, no apple juice, uh, something like that. Are you hiding anyone here that I should know about? Uh, no, there's no one you should know about. You know, things like that where you could like answer their question like directly, but still avoiding lying. Uh, so there's ways you could be crafty, as our Lord Jesus says, to be wise as the serpent and to be as innocent as the dove. But at the end of the day, again, we can't do an evil so that a good may result. Well, I'm Father Andrew Dickinson here at the Pius XII Catholic Newman Center. God bless you. I love you. Have a great week.